Illinois Novel Study Ministry uh, Tuesday. So we know what a keen prophetic gift she has, and she's funny, and she also sings. So she's a great entertainer as well as a great preacher. So everybody try to come to be blessed. But without any further ado, we want Brother Jack to come up. And Anne, three, are you, you coming out from one out? We love them so. Yes. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> and 
um, and so she had been coaching me, and, and um, uh, I did a, I did what you call a podcast. And I promise you, I've never had this experience in my life. How many of y'all know our God is a consuming fire? Yes. And on this podcast, they just told me to start telling every miracle story that I've ever seen or ever experienced, or all the things that Jesus had done supernaturally. And, and uh, suddenly, the fire of God just got all over me. And, and we went to a place where I've never been before. You know, the Bible says there's a, a river of fire that comes from the throne of God. And that that fire belongs in this earth. Jesus said, I would that it were already kindled. It belongs in this earth. Amen. And it was just consuming me. And, uh, and, and uh, I started talking to the guys, you know, kind of backing out of that anointing. And I said, are y'all okay? And they said, well, one of us is on the floor and the other one's draped, <laughs> draped over the chair. <laughs> And I've never in my life ever experienced an anointing like that. It was, it, but there was a little girl, and I'm just going with God. Is that all right? Yeah. There was a little girl that walked up to me in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. This was probably 10 years ago. And, uh, and she was maybe this tall, and she was a teenager. And she said, sir? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, uh, I see fire on your feet. You got fire on your feet. Did you know that? And I said, well, thank you very much. I'm glad you noticed. And, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I like to go for Jesus and all that. And she said, but you're at a wall, aren't you? And I looked at her. And I said, how did you know? I said, I've been crying out for more of God. I'm just begging God for more. She said, I saw you in a vision. Take two steps back. And she said, you took off running. And your body became nothing but fire. And you hit the wall and it exploded in a billion embers. I said, you're coming home with me. Come on. Baby. Texas needs you. And I think that was a, a moment where that happened. And we went out to 196 nations. And I, I, I was hoping that, um, you know, that, that we could share. Uh, there, there's a young lady whose little boy in her womb had a bad heart, and, and, and it looked like he wasn't going to make it. Y'all remember she was sitting back where Ann Marie is? Do you remember her? And, and we, we stopped the service before it ever even got the sermon before it ever even got started. We brought her up, and we prayed for her because the Holy Spirit said, no. "There's nothing like it when the Holy Spirit says what to do, Amen. and we're able to to follow His lead." Well, you know what? Uh, she carried that baby. And when that baby was born, he was born with the healthiest heart he could possibly have. Come on, somebody. We're hoping that she's going to be here. Um, she may walk in any moment. If not, we're going to see her at the Women's of Gold meeting at, at St. John the Divine. We're going to be ministering over at St. John. You know, that's where many are cold, but few are frozen. <laughs> And, and I wiped my face off on the 
fours, all fours. And I heard the Holy Spirit audibly say, you're going to carry my gospel to the nation. And, um, and I looked at Sid and I, and I said, and by the way, if y'all think television evangelists are phony, you're wrong. That's really, he's really raining. He rides rice. <laughs> and uh, he, he is the real deal. I, I, I'm telling you, kids. It's wonderful to be a TV evangelist. <laughs> and it's wonderful that, that uh, I got to have that experience. But I think there's something that's better. I think it's when the power of God hits a church and everybody becomes an evangelist. And everybody can heal the sick. And, and, and what would it be like if... Uh, it wasn't just Jack and Anna Marie, but if it was every one of you. And I want to read to you a really exciting song, uh, Psalm 36, and uh, the first verse. Y'all like my new Bible? Apparently, only wants to work when it wants to work. <laughs> end of heavens, which you're talking about. And thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the high mountains. Thy judgments are great and deep. And thou Jehovah preservest men and beasts. How precious is thy loving kindness, O God, so the sons of men take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They listen to this. I love you. I love you love the word of God. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Don't look at something. Like that. I'm talking about the fatness of thy house, and thou wilt make them to drink, to drink of the river of thy pleasures. What do you think that is? What what is it that pleased God the most? What is it? How did Jesus please the Father by doing? the will of the Father, by doing the word of God. And that's the pleasures. The pleasures is in the doing. The pleasures is in when we get to participate with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're no longer just going to church to, to watch and see, but we're going to church because we're on fire. Because God is trying to use us. He's wanting to turn us inside. I love like what Bill Johnson said. Quit praying for revival and become revival. That's powerful. Yeah. We, uh, we love it when God starts baptizing the Holy Spirit people again. You know, with tongues and interpretation and prophecy and all that. And, and you know, I, I just love it when the Holy Spirit comes corporately. Mm -hmm. Kenneth Hagin said many years ago, I wrote a little book about it called The Corporate Anointing. He said for 12 years, the, our church was so powerfully baptized in the Holy Spirit that when people would get sick, they'd get healed. If they tried to die, they couldn't. <laughs> For 12 years, nobody died in this church, and it was an older generation. Because the anointing was on everybody, and they didn't just look to him for all of the power and all of the, all of the performance and all of the, you know, uh, all of the ministry and all the power. They all became empowered. He said it was the most enjoyable time of ministry he ever had in his life. Because everybody was anointed. I'm, I'm writing a new book. Uh, it's called Administrations and Operations of the Spirit Empowerment. And uh, uh, Sid wants it. Uh, they, they called me, and, and Destiny Image is, is wanting, uh, they're, they're signing a deal with them to produce this book. But it's all about, it's not just about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's not just about. Uh, miracles and, and healings and prophecy and all that, uh, that's, that's uh, really secondary to operations, empowerments, and administration. And
And um, nobody preaches about that. And I think it's time that, that we found out what in the world does it mean to be empowered? And what in the world does it mean that there are administrations that come from the Holy Spirit? Administrations are basically the Holy Spirit doling out the gifts. It's, you know, the King James says services. That's, that's not accurate. It means literally there are distributions of these gifts, and they are supposed to happen every time we get together. Amen. So what we prayed about last night in, in Terry's beautiful home, what we prayed about is, Lord, would you send a corporate empowerment into this morning? Would you send the power of the Holy Spirit? Would you baptize us afresh in the power of the Holy Spirit? And would you baptize us in fire? Would you get us out of any ruts that we're in? Would you get us out of any boxes that we placed you in? Break it out, Lord God. Let it break out this morning in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we need you. And this world needs you. There, there's a there's a power that's coming from heaven. Uh, it's, it's described uh, extraordinarily in the book of Revelation. It's, it's described extraordinarily in, in Psalm 18. We just, we just read Psalm 18, and it reminded us of what Richard and uh, Anna Marie and I and Melissa, his wife, these are our new friends there. Would you all wave at everybody? They're, they're, from, uh, they're from Athens, Texas. Wonderfully prophetic people, amazing friends. We went to Jerusalem together, mm -hmm. and it absolutely changed our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to tell you, uh, we, we went for the Jerusalem prayer breakfast, which I think is an extraordinary move of the Spirit, to get America to marry uh, Israel mm -hmm. Amen. and to bless Israel. And if you bless Israel, you better look out. You are about to be knocked off your, 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 your socks are about to be blown off. Amen. And I, I, I just want to tell you, though, we had an ulterior motive for being there, and that was to find where David pitched the tent. We were desperate. The, the, the tabernacle of David, it says, was pitched at Dion Springs. And so all we were, had to do was just find Dion Springs, and we would have, have we would have found where David's tent was, where the glory of God was for 33 years. Where the glory of God, there was no veil anymore between the Ark of the Covenant and the people. The veil came down, and all the people were able to enter into the glory of God that only one priest was allowed to do one, once a year. And they were saturated in the glory and the power and the presence and everything that comes with the glory, which is the fire, which is miracles and signs and wonders. So I started reading the Psalms in a different way. I started reading the Psalms uh, as though uh, they were written in the glory. From the glory and into the glory. And so um, there, there, there is no doubt that they experienced the signs and wonders, the administrations, the empowerments, uh, and the distributions of the Holy Spirit. When it says in Psalm 103, forget not all his benefits, right? Who, who, who forgives all of your sins and heals you of all of your diseases. We read that like, well, that's, you know, for the future. That's going to happen one day. Can I tell you something? I believe it happened right there with David. That's why he wrote that song. Yeah. Because they had had the encounter with the direct glory of God. And they saw miracles and signs and wonders and everybody's sins were healed. And everybody in the, in the, in the tent was healed. And, and uh, that's one of the chapters in my book is I want to show and demonstrate how they were in the glory of God and it's not just nice poetry. You know, we think of Psalms, that's, that's just really good poetry that he wrote. He was in, and in, in Psalm 18, it's talking about everything that is around the throne of God. And it's lightnings, and it's, it's roarings, and it's voices, and it's earthquakes. You think earthquakes, uh, you know, can't come from heaven? Everything that is around that throne belongs in this earth. And it will defend you, and it will, it will defeat all of your enemies. It will take out every adversary. And, and 
can you imagine this? It's recorded in Revelations that all of those things, the, the, the lightnings, all, all of the powerful manifestations of the Holy Spirit from the throne of God are recorded in Revelations. And David got a revelation of it and wrote it down in Psalm 18. Every one of those manifestations of the Spirit coming from the throne of God absolutely destroyed the enemy. David is being pursued by Saul, and Saul's trying to kill him. And he said, Lord, you have protected me from the, my enemy, who's stronger than I am. How many of you feel this morning that what's attacking you, what's coming against you, is stronger than you are? And you don't have any strength for it. You need to delight in some fatness this morning. You need to come into the realm of the supernatural. You need to let heaven open up over you. Let God start warring for you. Glory to God. 